Here's a quick overview on your 275 gallon Mile High Water Solutions uh, uh, water trailer. So the trailer itself is rated at 5,200 pounds. Uh, it's probably 1,500 pounds more than you could possibly put on the trailer full of water uh, and tools and stuff. So should work really well for your application since you guys are primarily, primarily going to be off-road with it. Uh, so the trailer uh, is equipped with electric trailer brakes. Uh, trailer breakaway system and a LED DOT lighting package. You got the 275 gallon poly cage tank, IBC tank. Uh, that tank is readily available, uh, used you know on any Craigslist or almost any place for about a hundred bucks. So if you ever have an issue with it, it's it's easily replaced uh, at a at a low rate. Uh, did install hydrant filler for you guys. Works well with the self-drafting system uh, as well. Uh, you got an inch and a half fire fitting there. That's uh, an H thread, inch and a half. Uh, and the plumbing for your one inch hose reel runs up to there. You've got uh, uh, one inch ball valve here. On, obviously pressure going to the hose reel, off, no pressure. This one here, same thing up on goes up for the hydrant filler hydrant filler and self-drafting uh, and off down like that uh, three-quarter inch garden high flow garden bib uh, and the main uh, pressure the main uh, main valve here turns on and off pressure from the pump uh, when this is in that position there obviously it starves this manifold from pressure so there's no pressure in that uh, turn it on like this and with the pump running there'd be pressure there Down underneath that's the hookup point for your self-drafting system Pump two inch Gorman Rupp IPT pump uh, It's actually manufactured by AMT pumps and that's who you would contact for uh, any service parts or anything motors a uh, Honda GX 160 probably one of the most common motors on the market parts readily available uh, and by far the most dependable motors on the market up here towards the front so this is your trailer breakaway system over on the other side there's the battery the trailer breakaway batteries the box off to the right hand side there so this guy here if this ever gets uh, actu actuated like that that actuates the, uh, the trailer brakes you just want to make sure that you get this reinserted real simple just like that reinserted because it does draw a lot of power from the battery uh, back to those uh, back to the trailer brakes and you don't want that to uh, uh, to actuate more than it needs to be here we've got your seven pin RV style plug uh, real standard plug that it would be the standard wiring for uh, any vehicle that came with a factory tow package uh, dual heavy-duty uh, uh, trailer breakaway chains This is a uh, Vertically adjustable interchangeable hitch system. So you adjust it vertically for the tow vehicle that you're uh, you're hooking up to uh, You can swap the trailer uh, receiver out for a uh, This is a two inch here a two and five sixteenths or a pintle uh, This one's two inch over on this side here. You've got uh, uh, swivel style uh, drop leg jack so when this is in the up position uh, you just pop this pin turn it 90 degrees put the pin back in for towing uh, pretty simple uh, inside of here so you got two different uh, two different boxes here this one over here off to the left hand side is all of the trailer wiring trailer brakes and uh, uh, lighting all comes into this junction box and then distributes throughout the rest of the trailer so it makes a nice easy spot to uh, uh, test and diagnose if there is an issue trailer breakaway controller charge controller and battery inside of here has a little test button you push there yep and it shows that it's full obviously if you push that and the light comes on where low is low charge uh, and when it's hooked up to the vehicle and it's charging uh, there will be a little yellow light on here where it says charge Locking, uh, locking storage compartment. 
Also has uh, a gas shock, keep it in the up position. Inside of this compartment here, uh, you can see that that's the that's the tank that's the hose that feeds the pump coming from the tank, and you have a valve here to shut the flow off from the tank. If you ever have uh, have an issue where you gotta gotta stop the water flow from the tank, you would close that valve by turning it clockwise until it stops. There it is. You will also use this valve when you're doing self drafting. I'll do a demonstration a little later where uh, basically you turn this valve off. That's cut off the flow from uh, from the tank and redirected it out that tube there uh, to where you would hook up your self-drafting hose. Hose reel with uh, roller fair lead up on the front and the plumbing uh, where the hose is going to be hooked up. The cage for this tank is mounted with four half inch bolts. Half inch bolts there. And there. So if you ever have to service the tank, you just gotta unbolt those four, unbolt those four bolts. Unbolt the bolts that are holding the hydrant filler down. And here. Loosen that up. Take the back rail off two three-eighths bolts back here in the back, and the tank will slide right out of the back. Uh, there's a cam lock fitting on the tank itself. Inside of there, uh, if you want to disconnect it there, or there's a swivel fitting here that you just loosen up just like that, uh, and that tank will slide right out, right out the back. So now I'll do a quick demonstration on the self-drafting system. Pretty simple, just like I showed you. If you've got this valve in the off position, you're essentially cutting off the, the suction side of the pump from the tank, which makes it to where all of the suction for the pump comes out of this fitting here. So we already have it in the off position. What we'll do is I'll open this up and, and hook the hose up. Okay, so I have my suction hose hooked up. Got it in a bucket just for demonstration purposes. This normally works a little bit better if you do have a little bit of water in the tank. You would want this valve partially open. Flip the on switch onto the pump. Uh, you can choke it if you need to. Uh, make sure that the fuel is on, just standard uh, pump starting procedure. Start this guy up. Okay. Now what I can do is I can come over to here. I can open up the hydrant filler valve. Okay. Now when I open this up, I'm going to start to try to push water from the, from the tank, which we're partially open now, but also from the suction from the bucket all the way through the manifold and up to the hydrant filler. Yep, you can see uh, see the water's pump in there. Water's not really going down there quite yet. What I'll do is I'll start to turn off the valve inside of here. As soon as that's in the off position, 100% of the water flow is gonna be coming from the bucket and sucking out from up there. Now, sometimes you gotta have a little bit of extra, extra RPM with it. It'll take a second, but uh, but it will start to pump. Okay. See it going down there, and you always want to make sure that uh, that you've got the screen in position also. Turn the valve off. So we're done pumping. And kind of go back to the same procedure. Turn that guy off there. Turn off the tank. Make sure the tank's off. Pull this off. And reinstall the cap. Okay. 
turn this valve back on. That's reconnecting the pump to the tank. So now anything that pumps is going to be coming out of the tank. We can easily start this. Turn on any valve. Now one really important thing to remember, this pump, the coolant and the lubrication for the pump impeller inside of there is the water. So you never want to have the pump run dry for long periods of time. It can run dry for, sm for short periods, uh, but, uh, but if you ran that at full throttle for five minutes with the pump dry, you're gonna burn up the pump. Also, the pump, if there's no water flow, the pump creates its own heat. So if you ran it at full throttle with no water flow, that pump will overheat and actually the water within the pump will turn to steam. Uh, and then it's just like running it dry and it'll be a catastrophic failure as, as well. So if you're ever in a situation where you gotta have, uh, have it run in full blast and on standby, one of the things that you wanna do is just occasionally spray some water through it. If you spray one gallon through that, every 10 minutes it's going to cool the pump down and keep it keep it within safe operating temperatures uh, and, and increase the longevity of the pump uh, pump is just like anything else just like the engine on a car more rpms it's got the longer you run it the less life you're going to expect out of it so uh, everything's got a finite amount of uh, rpms that they can run so just try to adjust your rpms accordingly for the amount of water that you need uh, and never let it run dry and never let it run for too long without water flow. Uh, otherwise, you'll, you'll end up with catastrophic failures. Okay, I think that's just about covering everything. Obviously, garden hose bib here. Uh, you do have to watch out uh, uh, sometimes, like right now, th this, pump, this pump will hold pressure uh, even with the engine off. It's not normally a dangerous situation, but sometimes you'll crack that open and you'll spray yourself. So just always be, be aware that there could be pressure behind it, uh, even if the pump's not running. Uh, fire hose hookup, standard fire thread here. Pop that off, hook up your fire hose, and then you'd be ready to go. Now this does put out... Uh, uh, 100 plus PSI, uh, which is pretty formidable. So you want to make sure that uh, anybody who's operating it is uh, well aware that uh, that it could get away from them. Uh, never spray somebody with it because it could uh, I would blow somebody's eye out, or I mean, possibly strange situations kill somebody. But uh, they just have to have to make sure that they're they're aware that it, it does actually have uh, a significant force behind it. Uh, and I think that is about uh, about the sum of it. I'll send uh, manuals for the the reel and the pump and motor. Those are typically the only uh, uh, expendable parts. Uh, we do have uh, uh, this trailer runs a Dexter axle, so it's standard uh, uh, trailer parts uh, available at any trailer parts store uh, or redneck trailer. Uh, online is a really good source for those. Uh, I think that uh, that is about it.